this video we will be looking at the Maratha Empire. Okay. Through this video we will be able to learn the rise of Marathas, the life and achievements of Shivaji, Shivaji's administration, the rise of Peshwas. Okay. The rise of Marathas. Various factors are contributed to the rise of Marathas in the in the what in the 16th and the 17th uh, centuries. Okay. The physical environment of the Maratha country shaped certain peculiar qualities among the Marathas. Okay. And uh, uh, mountainous regions and dense forests made them brave soldiers and adopt guerrilla tactics. Okay, uh, guerrilla tactics we can say hidden warfare. Okay, they built a number of forts in the mountains. The spread of Bhakti movement in Maharashtra in indicated a spirit of religious unity among them. And uh, when we say about Bhakti movement, when we discuss the chapter of Bhakti movement, there was Tukkarman. Uh, I think his name is Tukkarman, or uh, I don't know exactly the name. Tukkarman is there. He was a person who actually contributed. A, he was actually a contemporary of Shivaji. Okay, he is a person. Uh, Tukkaram. Okay, Tukkaram is over here. Tukkaram. Tukkaram. He was a person who actually uh, started the Mara Maratha uh, identity or Maratha revolution. He was a contemporary of Shivaji. Okay, uh, the spiritual leaders, uh, leaders like Tukkaram, Ramdas, uh, Vaman Pandit, Eknath fostered social unity. The political unity was conferred by Shivaji. Shivaji, the greatest or the most important Maratha leader. Okay. And Marathas held important positions in the administrative and military systems of Deccan Sultanates of Bijapur and Ahmedabad. They were close to the Deccan Sultanates. There were a number of influential Maratha families such as the Moors and Nimbalkas. Okay, they, this can be asked for uh, maybe for uh, you know match the following in UPSC prelims. Okay, do keep this in mind. Moors and Nimbalkas are who are Maratha families. Okay, then we have. Uh, but the credit of establishing a powerful Maratha goes to Shaji Bonse and his son Bosle. Shaji Bosle and his son Shivaji. Shivaji, we will be looking at Shivaji, his life and his conquest. So from now on, we will be dealing with Shivaji in a story wise manner. Okay. Shivaji, he was born in Shivner, Shivner in 1627. His father was Shaji Bosle, Bonsle. Okay, mother Jijawai. He inherited the Jagir of Pune. He was, he was authority of Pune. Okay. From his father. After the death of guardian Dadaji Kondadev. Okay. In 1947, Shivaji assumed full charge of his Jagir, which is Pune. Okay. Even before he conquered Draiga, Kondana and Torana from the ruler of Bijapur. Okay. He conquered Javili from a Maratha chief, Chandarav Mor. Uh, this made him the master of Malwa region. He attacked the Bijapur kingdom and captured a number of hill forts on the, in the Konkan region. Sultan of Bijapur sent Afsal Khan, but Afsal Khan was murdered by Shivaji in a daring manner. Okay, going on, Shivaji's military conquest made him a legendary figure in the Maratha region. Many, of, many came forward to join his army. The Mughal emperor Auranzi was anxiously watching the rise of Maratha power under Shivaji. He sent Mughal governor of the Deccan, Shivasta Khan, against Shivaji. Shivaji suffered suffered defeat at the hands of Mughal forces and lost Pune. He lost, almost lost everything. Pune was his jagger. He lost Pune. But Shivaji once again made a bold attack on Shasta Khan's military camp at Pune and killed his son and wounded Khan. This daring attack affected the prestige of Khan and he was recalled by Aurangzeb. Shivaji attacked Surat. See, always when we look at Shivaji, always there is a, his comebacks are always greater. Okay. He, he lost Pune, but he came back. He attacked who says Khan and the chief port of Mughals and plundered it. Okay. This time Aurangzeb sent Raja Jai Singh of Ambir to fight against him. Hindu against Hindu. Okay. He is playing the religious politics here. Okay. He made elaborate preparations and succeeded in besieging Purandur, Purandur Fort where Shivaji lodged his family and treasure. Shivaji opened negotiations with Jai Singh and Preeti of Purandir. Preeti of Purandir. Okay. It can be asked. With against whom was the Treaty of Purandir was signed. Treaty of Purandir was signed between Raja Jai Singh, Raja Jai Singh and Shivaji. Okay, this can be asked. Okay, according to the treaty, Shivaji had to surrender 23 forts out of the 35 forts he held, and remaining 12 forts were to be left to Shivaji on condition of service and loyalty to the, to the Mughal Empire. On the other hand, Mughals recognized recognize the right of Shivaji to hold certain parts of the Bijapur kingdom. Uh, as Shivaji was asked to extend him from the personal service of the Mughals, his minor son, Shambhaji, was granted a manzar of 5,000. 5, 
Okay, Mansab was a grading system. Okay, Mansab Dari system. It was granted a Mansab of 5000. Shivaji visited Agra in 1666, but he was imprisoned there. But he managed to escape. See, actually, he, if, we, if you want peace, Shivaji is there. If you want war, Shivaji is there. So, even though he agreed for peace, he was imprisoned in Agra. Okay, and made, oh, and, but he escaped and made military preparations for another four years. Then he renewed his wars against Mughals. Surat was plundered by him for the second time in 1670. He also captured all his lost territories. See, this is what I told. His comebacks. The way he comebacks and reconquers what he lost is really important. That is what made him great. Shivaji crowned himself at Raigra and assumed the title of Chatrapati. Chatrapati. Then he led an expedition into the Karnatic region, conquered Genji and Bellur. After his return from his expedition, Shivaji died in 1680. Okay, now we will look at Shivaji's administration. Shivaji was a great administration. He laid the foundations of the sound system. He laid the foundations of a sound system of administration. The king was a pivot of the government. He was assisted by a council of ministers called Ashtapradhan. What Ashtapradhan? However, each minister was directly responsible for uh, responsible to Shivaji. Peshwa, finance minister and general uh, administration. Later, he became the prime minister. Peshwa is actually, I think, is a Persian word. Okay. Na, Sir A. Nabath or Senabadi, military commander, a honorary post. Amatya, accountant general. Uh, then we have Vakvinavi's intelligence post and household affairs. Sachiv, correspondence. Sumanta, Maha, master of ceremonies. Nyayadish, justice. Pandit Rao is a religious administration. Most of the administrative reforms. Shivaji were based on the practices of the Deccan Sultanis. For example, Peshya. Peshwa was a Persian title. Actually, the Marathas were actually friendly with the Deccan Sultanates. Okay. Uh, there were many Marathas who worked for the Deccan Sultanates. And uh, revenue system. Revenue system of Shivaji was based on the Malik Ambar of Ahmada Nagar. Lands were measured using a measuring road called Katti. Lands were also classified into three categories. Paddy fields, garden fields, hill tracks. He reduced the powers of existing Deshmukhs, Kulkarnis. He appointed his own revenue officials called uh, Karkuns. Okay. Chauth and Sandesh Mughi were the taxes collected not, on, not in Maratha kingdom but in the neighboring territories of Mughal Empire or Deccan Sultan. Chauth was one fourth of the land revenue paid to the Marathas in order to avoid Maratha raids. Sandesh Mughi was an additional levy of 10% on these lands which the Marathas claimed hereditary rights. Shivaji was a man of military genius. His army was well organized. The regular army consisted of 30,000 to 40,000 ca cavalry supervised by Havildars. They were given fixed salaries, two divisions of the Maratha cavalry, one Bargis and equipped and paid by the state, then Siladas maintained by the nobles. In the infantry, Malvi foot soldiers played an important role. Shivaji also maintained a navy. Then forts played an important role in the military operations of the Marathas. By the end of his reign, Shivaji had 240 forts. Each fort was put under the charge of three officers of equal ranks as a precaution against treachery. But each fort was put under the charge of three officers equal in ranks as a precaution against treachery. Okay. Sometimes Marathas could, uh, these leaders could uh, work with the Mukhals. So, in order to prevent that, equal ranking officers, three people were in each fort. Shivaji was really a constructive genius and a nation builder. His rise of the Jagirdar from Vijayagadha to Chhatrapati was spectacular. He unified the Marathas and remained a great enemy of Mughal Empire. He was a daring soldier and a brilliant administrator. Okay. Successors of Shivaji. There ensued a war of succession after the death of Shivaji between his sons, Shambhaji and Rajaram. Shambhaji emerged victorious, but he was later captured and executed by the Mughals. Rajaram succeeded the throne, but the Mughals made him to flee to Ginji fort. He died in Satara. He was succeeded by his minor son, Shivaji II. With his mother Tarabai as regent. Uh, next ruler was Shahu, in whose reign the Peshwas rose to power. Okay, Peshwas. Now we have we see the rule of Peshwas. Balaji Vishwanath, the first Pasha. Balaji Vishwanath began his career as a small revenue official and became Peshwa in 1730. As a Peshwa, he made his position most important and powerful as well as hereditary. He played a crucial role in the civil war and finally made Shahu as a Maratha ruler. He sought the support of all Maratha rulers for Shahu. In 1719, Balaji Vishwanath got certain rights from then Mughal Emperor Farooq Sahib. See, under the Peshwas, we can see the relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas improving. Okay, this is what I told you in the previous lecture. Okay, first, 
Mughals emperor recognized Shahu as a Maratha king. Second, he allowed Shahu to collect Chauth, the tax, and Sardesh Mughi from the six Mughal provinces of the Deccan, including Karnatic and Mysore. Then we have Raja Raja Rao one. Okay, Baji Rao was the eldest son of Balaji Vishwanath. He he succeeded his father as Peshwa at the a, a young age of twenty. Maratha power reached its zenith under him. He initiated the system of confidency among the Maratha chiefs. Under his the system, each Maratha chief was assigned a territory which could be administered autonomously. As a result, many Maratha families became prominent and established their authority in different parts of India. Okay, all these things just read through it. Then we have another important character. Balaji Bajji Rao, Bajji Rao. Okay, Bajji Rao. We have seen the movie Bajji Rao Mastani. Okay, if you've seen it, you'll understand it better. Okay, Balaji Bajji Rao succeeded his father as Peshwa at the young age of 19. Maratha king Shahu died in 1749 without issue. He nominated successor Ram Raja was imprisoned by the Peshwa Balaji Rao uh, at Satara. Okay, full control of Maratha kingdom came under the Peshwa. Peshwa entered. Into an agreement with the Mughal emperor, according to the Peshwa, gave an assurance to the Mughal emperor that he would protect. I told you in the previous lecture, Marathas would protect the Mughal emperor from the internal and external enemies, for which the south of the northwest provinces and the total revenue of the Agra and Ajmer provinces would be collected by the Marathas. Okay. Thus, when Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded Delhi, uh, invaded India, it came to the responsibility of Marathas. At this time, we can see. in united northern area okay marathas were working for mughals uh, and marathas were in turn working for who the deccan sultanates okay all these were working together and when ahmed shah abdali came to india they had to protect the northern frontier okay marathas fought bravely against ahmed shah abdali in the third battle of panipat third battle of panipat was battle against ahmed shah abdali and the marathas okay but they got defeated many maratha leaders and thousands of soldiers died in this battle balaji baji rao also died on hearing the sad end of his end of this battle also this battle gave a death blow to the maratha power therefore the maratha confidence we can due to internal conflicts among the maratha chiefs and after the decline of mughal empire the marathas emerged as a great power in india but could not be succeed in preventing the establishment of British power in India. The important causes for the downfall were that the lack of unity among the Maratha chiefs like Holkar, Sindhya, Bonsle, who also the superiority of the British army and the fighting methods ultimately won. So, what we learned? Learning outcome. Okay. Causes of the rise of Marathas, early career and military achievements of Shivaji, silent features of Maratha administration under Shivaji, rise of Peshwas, and the significance of Third Battle of Panipat. Okay. Uh, I hope. Uh, all, all these concepts were clear to you. So um, do see my previous videos. With this, I think we are completing the medieval India part. Next, we'll be seeing the colony uh, colonization of India. Uh, currently, we are also doing the GS one series. Also, look into it. And I hope all people, uh, all of you guys, are able to understand our lectures. And God bless you all. And Jai Hind.